Hey YouTubers, about the first of the season, uh, in the winter time I do a lot of cooking inside, so I don't worry about these too much, I stuck them out in the garage, had the lids on them, got a little bit of moisture condensation, so you can see they got some rust in the bottom of them, so my project today for my two main Dutch ovens is, this is not so bad, you got some spiders in it, but uh, I'm going to start working on these and cleaning them up, now how I do that is I go ahead, at the first of the season I'll use uh, steel, wool, soap pads, whatever, if they do need clean because I'm going to re-season them and get them ready to go for the year long. I do bake in them, bake uh, biscuits, uh, bread, anything else I can do uh, in the oven inside. I do outside in the summertime because I refuse to heat the house up with a stove. So this uh, Dutch oven, I think it's 10 inch. I got it from Atwood's. Uh, about three or four years ago it's a Lewis and Clark edition uh, check them out it's really a heavy duty one uh, cooks good so I'm gonna go ahead and hit these things with some steel wool and soap and water and uh, get them cleaned up if you got a big bucket uh, or a 55 gallon drum that's cut in half that you can put water in or a wash tub and bring it to a boil I can tell you right now Tide is like caustic uh, acid uh, if you bring it up to a boil and soak these in there they're going to come out super clean. Uh, the thing of it is, you got to dry them really quick and actually uh, rinse them and hit grease to them. If you don't, uh, they'll be so clean, it's almost like a, a hot tank in an engine block. They uh, will start rusting almost immediately. So I'm going to get on cleaning these and then I'm going to get my fire going, rub them down with lard, and show you how to season some cast iron. Okay, guys, so this is after I scrubbed them out. Uh, I actually use washing detergent along with steel wool pads, soap steel wool pads. You know, just get them as clean as possible. Uh, Granny used to actually take and uh, Hello, she would uh, put potatoes in the pot when it got any kind of rust or anything in it or she left one out in the barn uh -huh. and she would boil the potatoes until there was nothing but mush and then she would clean it out after that and then she would season it. I said it pulled all the metal metallic flake out and what I'll do is I'll do these in two stages. Uh, this is a lid and the lid on the outside, you're going to be putting coals on top of it. Uh, you're going to burn everything off. The inside needs to be as clean as possible. Uh, I'm still going to grease them down and season it. But as I use it, I'll be putting coals on top of it. So anything that's left on top of it, the oil or the grease uh, plus the coals, they'll burn anything else off of that. Uh, each time I use it, it'll actually pull more stuff out of it, clean it up better. Uh, the inside of this particular lid, it turns out to be a neat little fry pan griddle. Uh, the other pan, it does other lid, where I put it at, same thing, uh, put coals on top of it, it's going to have uh, some rust that happens, I mean you just got to clean them off as soon as possible, last year when I put them up I didn't do what I was supposed to and uh, I left them kind of dirty, but on the inside of this, big old flat surface, you flip that over and put it on a fire, and that is going to make you a nice little pancake griddle, or you can cook eggs or whatever else on it. Uh, as far as right now what I'm going to do, and it doesn't matter what you use as far as it's it's a shortening or a lard, uh, that's what adheres to the metal the best. Uh, it bakes onto it, it forms a protective coating, kind of a non-stick, and it helps it to season. So I'm going to be wiping these down with some shortening, and then I'm going to let you see my fire starter. It's pretty awesome. Back in a minute. Sorry about that. So the way I season my cast iron, a lot of people do it in the oven in the house, uh, oven at 400 degrees and, and they uh, smoke up the house. I do mine on my grill outside. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and light the charcoal and just to prove how big a redneck I am, I'll show you my lighter. So most of you know, uh, I don't use charcoal lighter fluid. I do use a charcoal chimney. It's sitting next to the grill. You'll see it in a second. But uh, the way I prefer to light charcoal, and this is how I season my cast iron. Pause it. Okay, guys. I'll put the torch on it for about a minute, minute and a half. And uh, right now we got some good gray coals. I'll still let it burn for about another 20 minutes. Now the charcoal starter I was talking about is the chimney underneath uh, this right here.
that's my grill grates but what that boils down to which will straight shot is uh, you see the holes in the bottom of it you put newspaper underneath your charcoal on the top you light it uh, the newspaper burns out the charcoal takes off uh, within about 20 to 30 minutes you got hot coals you dump them out uh, it's really awesome the uh, charcoal fluid and it doesn't really matter I mean I've gone many places after I started doing this and I can taste the fluid so anymore I just don't use it any way I can light charcoal without using fluid I do and I do cook with wood uh, I've got this grill that grill that grill I've got another smoker in front of the garage I've got one on the back porch it's electric smoker kind of cooker pour but uh, catch the drift of it we're gonna let this take off and I'm gonna get the grates on it we'll put the cast iron on it and get back with you okay guys before I put these on the cooker you can see the white on the side that's the shortening I put on them I do not use regular cooking oil shortening uh, seems to it just does better it coats the pans better it melts slower it does burn a little bit but uh, the finished product is a good coating it's uh, uh, pretty much almost stick resistant uh, I do have a lot of cast iron in the house that I use uh, never use soap on them uh, as soon as I'm done cooking with them I take them straight out dump any grease bring them back in and even though they're hot I put uh, water to them and I take a clean scrub pad and scrub them off uh, inside and out then I take a towel dry them off and you know the water's so hot the pan's so hot they dry off on their own super quick so they don't form a rust film and then I wipe a thin coating of uh, shortening right back in them uh, at, the t at the point I use them and I've got them seasoned up and I use them in the house I may go ahead and use a spray uh, oil or uh, uh, just a regular oil and, uh, and a paper towel and wipe them down then I take another clean one and wipe them back out and once I do that I hang them up on my pan rack and I do not worry about them uh, they stay pretty much non-stick uh, the only thing that I can say is don't use plastic with them use metal metal spatulas metal spoons that's the other key to making them non-stick I mean they're not hundred percent non-stick but with that metal spatula and the way you're able to pull stuff up and kind of just use a little bit of a firm scrape uh, they, they don't get messy they don't get nasty and everything stays good so we'll be back in a few